Hey everybody, welcome back to the Hero Homestead. Today we are doing lawnmower repair. And some of you who have paid attention for a long time ago will realize, ah, he's worked on lawnmowers a lot. This place eats lawnmowers. Anywho, we have uh, a Husqvarna LG2654, which is your pretty standard, you know, bigger yard lawn tractor for Husqvarna. Pretty good, pretty, pretty good. Um, one thing that a lot of people have issues with is either the belt driving off or the spindles kind of stripping out if they get caught on something. And I don't mean like every time, but you know, if you really are not paying attention or unaware of something in your yard, you can damage it. Or if it's, you know, if it's ran a lot, which this thing has over 800 hours on it. So it's, it's definitely been ran. Um, those things need updated just like anything else on the, like your cars or what, what have you. So, uh, last year when we got the lawnmower, uh, it it was you know very very well ridden so we decided to because I kept having the issue where the belt was jumping off which is common for this model once that happens which first and foremost if for those of you don't know tip uh, a, a little hack for it is the trick to keep the belt from jumping off do not turn the blades on and off or sorry had that backwards don't raise and lower the deck with the blades on turn them off let them stop then adjust the height whether you're done mowing or getting started that throws the belt off it the torque on it just the way it sits that's how it does it so that's a simple fix for that but down the road once you have to start actually like repairing and updating your your mower uh there's some things that can happen so last year had some issues thought we'd update it and replaced everything the spindles the a couple of the pulleys the blades all that and I learned a lot and I will be able to skip all the stuff I screwed up the first time this time but anywho I fixed it and I got it to work and I realized okay these things need corrected and it kind of caused a problem but I made it work and then I let Blake drive it and apparently he found the old uh, dog cable run that had been laying in the yard under all the high grass in the backfield like I said you know we've been really restructuring things and I didn't know it was there because I'm new to the property but he he had completely forgotten about it and yeah, so he ran right over it, and it obviously got sucked right up into the three blades, and before you know it, boom, strips out them all. So all that hard work we did was for nothing. So I tried to Frankenstein it all back together at the end of the season last year just to get us by, and it worked a couple more weeks, and finally it just, you know, it just wasn't going to work. The things were shot. So here we are today with uh, all new parts, so it can be like it's a brand new mower deck. So here we go. What you'll get in a kit, which... Um, I just googled it found a couple things that the the best deal I could find was you get the whole kit for about a hundred bucks Anything less than that. You're you're not gonna get everything and anything more than that You're wasting your money. So uh, What you get here's the mower deck. It's a 54 inch three blade deck pretty standard couple springs couple of pulleys So what we're gonna be changing these are your spindles here And these are the pulleys that mount the belt to it which actually drive it. There's three of them and then these are just tension pulleys, guide pulleys, things like that. And then this is the rocker arm that mounts it to the, the mower body itself and then a spring for tension. That way if it does hit something, it can throw the belt and save you damage. So what you get in your kit is three spindles, three pulleys for the spindles, the belt, three blades. And then this comes with every spindle. It's, you know, the lock in the blade on the bottom. Um, one thing to be careful of, which I'll show you as I go, it's hard to see because it's in the plastic, but this is the, the nut that holds on the top. And then you'll think it's part of the spindle, but it's not. There's a washer here. It goes under on the bottom of the pulley because it rests on the spindle and the bearing in there so it can spin free. And then you can clamp your pulley down and it'll all work right. If you put it on top or leave it off, you'll destroy it. It'll eat the teeth. It'll cut right through it and melt it. And I learned that one the hard way last year. Anywho. So here we go. Okay, so your first step is going to be, you gotta get this nut off so you can get the spindle off or the pulley off so you can then get to the bolts down here, which will get your spindle out of your deck. Now the way you're gonna do this, easiest way, hopefully, um, first off, be careful. This whole thing will turn because it's designed to, that's what makes the blade spin. Cause the belt, all that, any of that, you know, when it's functional, that's how it works. But so what you got to do is if you try this with like an air wrench or power drill with sockets and stuff like that be careful when you crank that nut over and try to get it to come loose it will free spin in reverse so if your feet are under there your hands are under there and you take off with a drill or an air wrench 
you might might be missing a digit if you're not prepared so um, I'm not against using those things but I'm just getting started so I always try the the you know build the muscles way first so I got an adjustable wrench and what you're gonna do is you know just put that put the wrench on the top and then if you reach under the deck because everything's disconnected and whatnot you just hold on to the blade down there you know not hard just grab a hold of it put some tension on it that way when you go to loosen it you can actually use you know strength from both arms wrench one way and then opposite on the bottom where the blade is and you can crack that loose and take it off there so that's that just like that kids not too hard Sometimes you need to press against whatever you gotta do, just get the leverage. Be careful not to crack your knuckles over here. Otherwise, you'll look like every one of our dads after he came in from working on the car. Complaining, throwing the man fits. It is what it is, but it's a true story. Whew. Depending on your handedness, it might be easier. If you do this by pulling the blade, I mean, it's obviously not sharp, sharp, you're gonna cut your hand, but if you wanna wear a glove, that's cool. I usually recommend it, but uh, I left mine in the house and I didn't feel like walking all the way back up here to get it. So here we go. Okay, so got the three bolts off. Had a little bit of different experience as you saw at the, the first one. This one was a little tough. That's because when I put this together last year, this nut or washer is supposed to go underneath the pulley. Like it rests on this, on the spindle to go with the bearings, like I said, then the pulley, then the nut. I did it backwards under there. So it was kind of, all this was seized together and that caused a little bit of a problem. The other two came off really smooth, really easy. Now, as you can see, this one's missing. So don't be alarmed if when you're changing this, especially if they're really old and you've had a lot of damage or problems, for that to just drop right out of there. It means, you know, the bearing shot's loose and it's just gonna fall. And that's what happened here. And as you can see, there is still a bunch of the wire left that Mr. Blake found for us out in the yard, wrapped around it that had been wedged between the deck and the blade and all that causing all kinds of issues. So there's that, but yeah, don't be alarmed if this drops right out of there. It happens when these things are old and shot, but typically they'll, they should stay rested in there. They might get loose, but since you're replacing everything, when you get the kit, that's okay. Um, now I'll give you a little description since I have it out here and it's easy to see right here. See this, there's supposed to be teeth there, which I'll show you on the new one, how pronounced they are, but these are grooved teeth that go inside this. And you can see this is pretty much missing all its stuff as well. You can kind of see the indentations where there was a pattern. Um, again, it's supposed to be, it's like gears and it locks together. So the belt turns the pulley. Those teeth are locked into the teeth on this. That spins this, that spins your blade. That's how your lawnmower works. Um, obviously none of those things look as they should, so they can't function as they should leaving me in the position that I'm in of having to be out here on this beautiful day, getting dirty and greasy instead of having fun. But back to it. Now, another thing always to be mindful of, uh, I ran into the shop to grab some tools and I came back. Uh, when you come back to your deck, always check it out because you never know, you might get uh, startled by something unexpectedly, like a chicken hiding under here. They're everywhere and they're always causing issues when I work. Either pooping or pecking or eating or something, but they give us eggs and they're cool. These ones are friendly, but reached under there, scared the crap out of me when all of a sudden I got bit. Anywho, back to work. All right, had to adjust a little bit. I threw the, the cardboard box, all this stuff came in, into the burn barrel, and we had a fire last night. Sorry about that, my hand. Um, you know, a little fire to keep warm last night while I was working out here, and apparently there was just enough heat and uh, coals underneath all the ash that when I threw in the cardboard just to set it there, it just took right off, so. Always be mindful of your fire areas, kids. But also that means with the wind, the smoke is going nuts. So I had to step back for a second. So anywho, here we are. Next step. The reason you do this in this order is so you don't have to get nuts and be frustrated later. So as you're working your way down, the next step after you get the pulleys and everything pulled off is um, there's four bolts that mount the spindle to the deck. Here you go. One, two, three, four. Um... A lot of issue people have outside of what I'm doing is sometimes, and you hit stuff, this thing has been designed the way it is because they were noticing that the bolts were shearing or the deck itself was breaking on those bolt points. And then you don't just replace the part, you have to replace the whole deck. So I'm glad that they changed that. Um, 
But anywho, four bolts, size 13 socket, and use an impact wrench. Uh, be gentle with it because you can shear the bolts off and then that's an issue. So just kind of go easy. Don't try to go quick. If it's difficult, just take your time. If you have to, get the adjustable wrench and do it that way or something. Or a socket, an actual socket, like hand instead of a drill. But take those off nice and easy. Um, the new... The new spindles do come with new bolts if you shear them off. Um, so you're not out of part, you're just out of time, out using time that you would need while you get it out of the spot. So here we go. So yep, you just come over, it's very simple. I think all of you probably use a drill. Make sure it's in reverse. Simple as that. Just do it 12 times. But like I said, be easy, go slow. Make sure you use an impactor, not a drill drill you can force it and you can shear it impactor it really seats it in there and that's the best way to do it so yeah as you can see that's normal obviously there's nothing holding it anymore so as it falls it falls out of there don't freak out it's just gravity and now i'm scared all right okay Next step, so once you get the, all four bolts out, like I said, that drops out, or you can hold on to it, let it loose so it doesn't bend. Hold on to your bolts, just like I said earlier, hold on to the washer that goes here and the nut that goes on top, just in case there's any issues, or something gets lost or dropped or kicked or whatever, those are good to have. Anywho, next step, if you want to, which these, I replaced them last year, so with a little grinding, they're still perfectly good. Um, so I wanna save the blades. One nut on the bottom, all you do is you unscrew that and this thing will come out and nut and the washer will come off and it's all separate. Again, like I said when we started this, don't just go to town with an air wrench or a drill on the nut, especially when you get to the bottom. You turn it, that thing is still going to free spin while you're holding it in your hand and you're going to end up with a bad day. So what you want to do, um, size 16 nut uh, socket. So fit it on there, get it good, and then just get a hold of it. Make sure it's nice and tight. And again, just go slow. If it forces it and acts like it's going to try to throw you, obviously it's not safe. But if you have a good firm grip on it, get your hand wedged in the groove of the blade here and just hold on. That way the pressure is all right. It ain't going to spin. Just like that. It comes right off. Cradling it like a baby. Keeps you safe. Um, nut and the washer comes off. This is in that little star pattern there. Everything's separate, put it all to the side, do it three times, and you're done. And then the deck has been stripped, and you can put on your new parts. Okay, so the deck's been stripped down and uh, taken care of. I kind of cleaned off as much of the stuff as I could. Didn't need to waste your guys' time watching me clean. So next step is put it all back together. Got all my parts and everything. So basically, to keep it simple, we're going to go in the reverse order just because that's what makes sense as far as everything fitting together in place as well as safety so there we go first step put the blades and everything on and then after that you fit it back into the deck put in its four bolts onto the deck then fit the, the pulley and spindle and everything together screw it down the top put the blade on or belt on then we'll be good to go get on the mower all right here's the new spindle uh, like i said it comes with its new bolts so i'm going to be putting the blade on and showing you that in this part but um, make sure before you go to put it under the deck and mount it together you take those off so you don't got to try to fit, fiddle with it so take your bolts out and then take your blade, flare side will go up under the bottom of the deck. Slant obviously is the blade that's going to cut the grass, meaning my finger's the grass, you want it to look like this. Simple. Take this, there's a star pattern there, there's a star pattern there, fit them together. Once you do that, take your bolt, Comes with this big fat washer, put the bolt through the washer, and then get it started gently. Make sure not to thread it, uh, cross thread it and all that. Make sure everything stays fit together, because once it comes undone, it's annoying. Just like this is annoying. All right, so there's that. Then get it to where it's situated. Obviously, it's got the powder coat still on it, so it's fighting now. Make sure you're not really, really fighting it because you'll cross-thread it and you'll ruin it. You have to get it just right to a point. Now, 
you'll notice that when this goes to take off, if this grips or get whatever, it'll start to spin and this thing will walk. So be careful because it all goes together. So just get it to where it's just mostly tight. Just like that. A couple of clicks. And a couple more for safety. She on there. Just like that. Ta-da! Two more to do and then we'll get her in the deck. Uh, got the everything assembled on all three of our spindles and blades. So what you do is um, make sure it's secure when you got it propped up, but go bring it up under the deck and through this little hole here. And then, as you can see, sorry, how it's coming up through here, you see the bolt holes. Make sure you kind of get them lined up. Start threading them by hand as much as possible before you use the impact drill. That'll save you a lot of heartache in the long run. I promise you that. But anywho, you do that, which I left the bolt sitting over here, and I'm left-handed, so that was stupid. All right, so all of them are on there. Then grab the impact, size 13 again. Done with the 16. That was just for the blade bolts. And then you just kind of go through. Get it nice and easy to where you see it snug. You saw it kind of move. Go around and do all of them that way before you really crank it in there. Think of it like uh, lug nuts on your car. You want to zigzag. And then get her done. Just like that. Uh, one spindle in. Wash, rinse, repeat for the other two. So, got all the three spindles on and in place, bolted in nice and good. Um, now time to do the, the pulleys on the top. So I already went ahead and took the gold nut off of that. And as you can tell, there's a little difference. You can see these kind of little nipple. It's a, it's a grease thing for the spindle itself. A couple of them had sheared off on my last one. So obviously I, you could tell I hadn't done it the right way. But, so like I said, this is how we do it. This thing comes with a washer here. And a nut. Take the nut off, leave the washer on. It has to sit on the spindle, on the bearing. Otherwise, it'll shear everything and it's all shot. And you get to do all this all over again, just like I did. Anywho, but as, as I told you earlier, you can see the teeth on here are pretty pronounced. That's how it's supposed to be, like a gear. Same thing with your pulley. Pretty good, sharp, you know, grooved teeth there. So, anywho, take that, set it down on there. Make sure it fits in there nice and snug. As you can tell, like you can see how the grooves stick out above that. You're wondering how it's gonna work. The nut is recessed in there. The threads don't start till up in there. That's gonna slide down over it. So you take it and just tighten it down. Do it hand tight as much as you can. It's so much better than what that was. I'm guessing this will have some play in it. That way it can kind of fiaddle, but it'll, it'll still work. Keep in mind, like I said, when we took it off of there, if you try to just spin it with a drill, that's what's gonna happen if your knee is under there, your leg, your hand or something, you're gonna have a bad day. So tighten it down as much as you can by hand, then just use your adjustable wrench, tighten it the rest of the way, holding on to the blade as you do it. That's that, times three. One thing I did forget to mention, because um, you'll be wondering how it fits. As you can see, this is a pass-through nut, so the threads are gonna start coming out the top. And it doesn't take much to get it uh, screwed down. So all I did is literally just held the adjustable wrench in place around the nut, held it there. I did all the work with my other hand, uh, just turning the blade underneath. And like, so you finger tighten it till you can't anymore and then just spin the blade. And as long as you're holding this in place, it takes a little effort, but it's pretty easy. Um, and it'll tighten all the way down. Uh, don't crank it too far where you'll start to see this warp because you'll be expecting it to get to tight and stop and it won't. Um, because it free spins and it's got the bearing in there, you'll start to pinch and crush your spindle if you do it too tight. So get it, you know, really good snug, really good tight, but it's still gonna free spin. If you hear it grinding or having any issues and it's slowing itself down, then it's too tight and you need to fix that. But that's what it is. So again, do that three times. Okay, so all three are on there. Um, you're gonna notice there's a little bit of a wobble, I think. I do believe that is by design um, on, the, on the middle and the far right where the discharge opening is um, I think that's so you know there's a little bit of play and things like that this one the very first one on the far left of the deck 
it it snugs down tug and tight i think that is because here's your you know your pressure spring and all that and it comes around um i think that because of the way the throw system works that one has to be tight so if you have one that snugs up first and these two have just a tiny bit of play in them it does look like it's normal and by design so i wouldn't stress too much about that so next step the belt first thing to worry about with these mower decks is this guide here um as you can tell from having to take it on and off a few times the nut is stripped and seized and all that so it's a pain in your butt um but there is a hack to do this it only the hack only works if the mower deck is not attached to the mower obviously so i'll show you that but realistically what you'd have to do is loosen this nut up to where this little guide bar can pop up and you can get your belt underneath there because it's designed obviously to keep the flow and the tension and all that and it, if you can get it easily in and out then what's the point of having it but anywho so it's snug down and tightened and in place like it should be so the trick is take your belt i've already done it but you take your belt and you kind of have it in this position to where the tapered side is facing upwards grab both pieces to where they would be kind of wedged here but underneath this pen thing the little rider arm and the th uh, wheel and then just kind of work you know put your foot on the deck that way it doesn't flip up on you and just work it back and forth and with a little obviously don't go crazy because you could tear or rip the belt but just kind of a little back and forth and boom pops right into place that is the hardest part of getting this belt on so what you're going to do is you're going to go ahead and go through the motions hopefully you guys have left this sticker on here um i don't know why you'd ever want to take it off because the belt is the most commonly replaced part on a mower but here it is for those that need it lg 2654 husqvarna belt pattern map so we'll go ahead and we'll do all this this is obviously the, the pulley that comes from the transmission that spins everything so you'll just leave that there and then we'll get to the part where we put it all together once i get the mower back or the deck back under the mower but here's your pattern We'll go ahead and get all that together. So you remember earlier how I said, be careful when you step away that something might come hiding under the deck. Well, I'm sitting here going through this stuff and I had to put the phone down because all of a sudden I realized our mama pig decided to go on a little adventure and walked right up and scared the crap out of me. Luckily, she's uh, pretty tame. She just had piggies. We have three little baby piggies back there. This is Violet, she's wonderful. So as you can see, I got a pig on a leash. Oh. This is the homestead. This is what we do. And it is always this adventurous. Back to it. Okay, so I figured I'd give you guys one good look at this before I drag it under the lawnmower here. Uh, that's the belt configuration. Obviously use the map to make it work, but in and around and all that. Um, I haven't really talked about it this whole time, but this is your tension relief bar. So as you can see, those things kind of move. The idea is, as you're going, if, anything gets like you hit a root or a big old branch or something head hitting the grass you can't find and it kind of jams up everything when it stops your blades from spinning and everything tries to kick and jar what it does is it when the tension hits high it it will compress and pull that the spring over here engages pulling this down this bar here and when it flies out it releases the tension on the whole system so the belt can come off so it doesn't snap your belt or break any of your components and then your only issue is crawling down there and cleaning all the dead grass off and putting the belt back on. But that's what it's supposed to look like while it's off the mower. This loop here obviously is for where it's going to connect to the transmission pulley that drives the whole thing. But all right, give me a minute, get everything cleaned up and out of the way, and then I'll get this thing underneath the lawnmower and I'll show you how to put it back on there. Um, the reason I didn't show you how to take it off is because I actually took the mower deck off in the fall last last year and. Uh, wasn't about to put it back on just to show you how to take it off. So I'm sure if you reverse engineer what I show you to put it on, you can figure it out. Okay, a little bit of a task, but we got it. The deck is under there. A um, couple things to be mindful of when you get it under there. I said under there. Um, is make sure you don't mess up your belt, but also these rocker arms. You're going to naturally want to flip them that way to get them out of your way. Don't do that. That's not where they go. They have to be flipped forward for the, how they mount under there. If you flip them backwards, you could puncture a tire, you get them wedged under there, and it's hard enough lifting a lawnmower up and getting this thing under there than anything else. But yeah, that's how that is. So it's under there. Um, make sure you lower 
your deck. I know the deck isn't attached, but you still want to have it in the most low position that you can get to help you out because it controls this and makes it a lot easier. Um, so here's what you should have, assuming you took everything off when you took your deck off. This is a stabilizer arm. goes on the back. black one goes on the back. You can tell by this. And also, I'll show you when we go to put it in there. You'll think these little nubs here, if you can see them, go through like the secure, the, the hole through the frame that they go through. The, the stubs do not. The reason it's bent the way it is is that goes through and hooks. These keep it from going through and hitting the engine block and stuff like that. But, yeah, don't make the mistake of trying to fight it or think you're doing something wrong. Those do not go through these part. Um, and then this end, it's got the spot for the cotter pin where it'll hook to the mower deck. The silver one, um, I got this mower used from my father-in-law. He let us use it. Um, so I didn't build this. I don't know if this comes this way or if this is something he came up with to make it the right you know, positioning, but there's all these parts. This rounded piece fits into the bracket hole up there. So let's get to it. Um, make sure you have all your stuff. There should be one, two, three, four, five larger pins, two smaller pins. Some have washers, some don't. Common sense if you lose one or use one or find one. So that's how it is. So let's get started. This black bracket under there, take the end and it want you know, you want to have the, re the deck receiver end goes towards the uh, the ejection port on the deck where all the grass spits out, so it'll go that way through that hole right there. That's how it's going to fit through, and you, you hold it in place with a washer and a cotter pin. But before you do that, roll your deck forward up against the front tires. Take this in. You're going to have to kind of fiddle it through that, do whatever. Fit it in like that, and then you just rotate a little bit. It can't come out, and it can't push through because of those little nubs on the on the bar and then kind of hold it up and you have to roll the deck back a little bit to get it to fit get it to wherever you need to get it ah, I'm fighting the thing and then just fight her through and that's the first step come around to this side like I said to run the injection side this is where it pops through right here so just kind of an egg on the deck put the washer on get your cotter pin on uh most of it go to the back that way you don't run a risk of this thing ever somehow catching it it is going to be kind of a pain in the butt with the other bracket there but it will pop through like that so from this side you can see that's how it comes through just pop the, the receiver part with the cotter pin and things like that and then you can get a good angle on this, how it goes through the bracket and the way it's bent will hold it there. These nubs keep it from rubbing against your engine block and possibly causing some sort of problem there. So, all right, while I'm over here, I'll show you the rest. This is one of the bars that raise and lower your deck. You gotta finagle it over this receiver. So just kind of send it back. Like so. Get it on there. The cotter pin and then since i'm over here this you see this this kind of nub up here and there's a hole in it for a cotter pin there too so kind of this is where you kind of have to muscle your way through it sorry if i'm making anybody car sick here with the jostling around and trying to hold the phone in fight with it all right this is just going to lay here for just a second There, like that, and like that. So, I'm gonna get the, the pins because they're laying on the other side, but that's how it looks when you're done. It just, that's gonna go there and have a pin through it, and that's gonna go there, have a pin through it. Repeat the steps on both sides, only the other side obviously won't have that because it's on this side and you only need the one for the back, but that's how it goes. So pin, pin, repeat on the other side, pin, pin, and then I'll show you how to do the belt and do the front arm, and then that should be it. Okay, got the pins on. That's what it looks like there. So this small pin, no washer. On your uh, black rocker arm, you have stabilizer there. This is your, this is the bar mechanism. There's one on the other side. That's what raises and lowers the deck when you cut or when you go over stuff. That way all it is is resting on the wheels. And you know, washer, big pin there. Same thing on the other side, washer, big pin, no washer, small pin. All right, now 
after those are on, the only thing we have left is the front sway bar mechanism. And what that's gonna do is one end goes through here, gonna connect right there. So the easiest way to do this, because you have all these gadgets, gizmos on the front here, take the bar in front of the lawnmower, send it all the way through like that. That way that rounded off piece can rest right there. Next, take a washer, sorry, take a washer, feed it the length of the bar. Uh, try and do this with one hand. And you take the washer, you feed the length of the bar, get it all the way up there. In the front, it kind of has a catch. Then, as you can see, there's a hole there for, for a pin. Put a pin in it. That way you can't slide out and bump around. Just like that. That's how it looks on that end. Back here at the mower deck side. Sorry if I'm making anybody car sick. All right, move your belt out of the way so it's not getting tangled up. Looks like this. Very simple. Feed it through. Feed it through, washer on. Pin in. Put the pin on the deck side so it's not rubbing against that wheel and either getting knocked around or bumped or kicked out. And that's what it does. That's it for all that. Now, last step. Make sure your belt is still around all the pulleys. Remember, tapered side goes on your empowered spindle. Wide side goes on the free spin pulley that all it is is a guide rail. Oh, man, I can't talk today. As long as you can verify all that, it's there. Now, as you can see, it's short. It's not the wrong belt. It has to have tension, obviously. To put this on here, take your tension rod off. Go like that. That way it's all the way back. It waits all the way loose. Much easier to fight that out here where you have space and you can control it than in here. Take the belt, and get it up around the, the spindle, here, the pulley there. So, like so. You still gotta put a little effort into it, but you can get it started. You can kind of guide it. And it should go. You just kind of use, there you go. It's just like that. You just kind of bump it, get it on there, make sure it's seated really, really well. Then visually follow the belt through its spaces. This is what I was telling you how it guides underneath that. Keeps it where it needs to be. Now, obviously you can see it's rubbing. That's just because of the position it is where everything's loose. Come back here, grab the belt. This is going to be have tension on it and it's going to move things. Be careful. If you lose a slip, it's going to slam back. You don't want to be standing there and have a kid around or an animal or something like that and get hit. So you just go like that. That is it, sir. All you need to do is check it all good. That'll go there. That's the guide. That's that. That's that. It's all on. I guess it's the moment of truth. Now, as I said beginning, don't raise or lower the blades while it's running. Obviously, it's not running. So first things first, let's start it up. I'm going to set you guys down. If you shake off, I'm sorry. Can't help it. Push the brake. Pull the choke, turn the key. The choke. We're running. All right. Wish me luck. That's not good. Well, it spun, but I don't know why it died. Let's find out. Sorry about that. So I figured out the problem. Um, common sense, the power, all that was down here instead of up there like it should be. So we use, we take the wagon over there, hook it to this little tractor since, you know, we had the motor deck off and we use it to haul water way to the back over where the alpaca is and where the chickens are now and everything like that. But that's what we do. But I'm guessing since Celia did the animals, like she usually does in the morning. She must have turned it way down because it was, you know. Anyhow, so when I started it and the, the deck engaged since the power was all the way down, it stalled it out. So thankfully it was something simple because I was about to have a conniption fit. But either way, um, yeah, let's get out in the yard. Check this thing out. Okay, so came out to the front yard. It's most level, most least 
dangerous spot in the yard as far as stumps and crazy stuff that might be there from all the animals and construction we've been doing. Um, one thing you always want to do, whether it's normal lawnmower or whatever, uh, make sure you go through, clear out any big sticks, which I did. I did. Uh, I left some small ones just to really test the deck. Uh, anything that any normal lawnmower should be able to just go clean over and bust up. Nothing crazy. All right, here we go. So as you can see folks, it works, it didn't fly off, we're good. I'll give an update later in another video that has something to do with something else when I remember to make sure it's still going and good, but hope you all enjoyed it. The uh, Husqvarna LG 2654 54 inch mower deck, complete mower, refurbish and reinstall and uh, all that. So catch you later Bill and Ted, because that's what heroes do.